Here we go, day three of Drag Week. Yes, we are out, but we are not quitting. We spent the last day and a half disassembling David Freiberger's Hemi Gremi and then putting it back together. Keeping it positive, we discovered my engine is not completely total. So we overnighted a new set of total seal rings and some things from CP Carrillo and we are headed to Brownsburg, Indiana, basically Indianapolis, to put our Hemi back together. And with any luck, we're gonna rejoin the group maybe tomorrow in Cordova for day four of Drag Week. I would like to see this thing, just give me one wheelie for Drag Week, that's a win for me. Just wanna see, you get, those, get those fronts up in the air. We're talking like smash the oil pan kind of wheelie, bend the leaf springs backward kind of wheelie, or? I mean, that's up to you. A lot of times it's not up to me, it just happens. I think our goal is, you know, do at least one full day of driving and then run an eight back at Worldwide Technology. That would be pretty epic at this point. That would be the greatest drag week for me. Like yeah. next to the one where we won, like yeah. we can do exactly what you said, road trip with everybody, yeah. run one eight, and me take this thing home in one piece so I can take my kids to school that's in the, it. That's the goal. Oh, dude, I'd be so stoked. That's the goal, day three of drag week. That's what we're going for. I just looked at the the map of all the tracks, you know? So we're in Madison. Yesterday, everybody raced in Indy. I shipped my parts to Indy. So we're about to drive 300 miles to Indy, to try to fix the car. Today they're racing in Byron and driving to Cordova tonight to race Cordova tomorrow. If we fix the car today in Indy, it's 300 miles to Cordova but they're leaving Cordova tomorrow. <laughs> Do we fix the car tonight? Try to stay awake all night to bomb to Cordova, knowing full well that they're leaving Cordova tomorrow. I'll just take it one step at a time, focus on getting to where we gotta go and rebuild the motor. Worry about the rest of it later. Gotta let her have it a little bit. Oh, she's turned down right now. All right. I was going for fuel economy. I like it. Diesel's 570 a gallon. Gas is 368. Man, you buy a cheaper from Home Depot. It's kerosene. Turn right. Yeah. What's that clunk in the front? I don't know. That's new. It's not like the floor kind of oil canning. It's weird. Yeah. It is a long truck with, you know, a stock frame that's been lengthened, but not necessarily gusseted in any yeah, way. Yeah, I've noticed that. So, that. It's a very pliable ride. Yeah, that's called planned uh, stretch or yeah, we're gonna build flex, some flex, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, you ever notice those aluminum flatbeds? And there's nothing on them, they're, they're curved like that. Yeah. And I guess someone knows how to calculate with the weight on it that they'll be flat. I don't know, it's impressive though. Have arrived. Oh yeah, getting ready to rock. We got two pilot bearings from American Powertrain. We got two sets of rings from Total Seal. And um, I guess neither one of those companies were confident in our ability to do the job right the first time. That sounds right. Yeah, and we got burritos coming. And we got burritos coming. It's all good. good. So we're ten minutes away from Jake's who I've never met, but is kind enough over the phone to say, yeah. Come Jake in, Sanders, though, what come, a name. Dude. Yeah, come invade my home garage. 
I've never met the dude, but I like him already. Yeah. Uh, he just texted. He said, it doesn't look like anyone's home, so just come in the side door that faces the back of the house. You'll yeah. hear the machines running in the back of the big shop. He's got scenes. I like machines. him already, dog. He's got scenes. scenes machines. Something about the dude that, like, when your shop is at the house, I like you already. Yeah. Yeah. He's you don't ever want to be more than 80 feet away from all your stuff, from the cars and the work. That's dedication. At that point, you don't even need heavy, heavy artillery. You, know? yeah. you can get a dog and your shop is next to your house and you know, no missiles needed. He's got CNC machines running parts for companies right now. Oh, he's doing production? Even, yeah, I can't even imagine what this place is like. That's awesome. He's like, yeah, I got a shop behind my house. Yeah, I bet he does. I'm like, yeah, I got a shop under my house. I got some Haas machines in there. It's going so, nuts. Yeah, I got a basement. That's what I got. After seeing his, I'm going to stop calling mine a shop. I'll be like, yeah, I got a basement. I got a basement. I got a basement. I got some hard freight tools. You know, rolling hard. I've learned a lot the last few days. When I get home, I'm going to pull the fuel cell out and put a sending unit in it. Yep. You know, go into the holly, turn on every safety. All the safety. Every safety, po every safety possible. Well, at one point, we had safeties. I know. That was. Uh, Two versions of the software ago and five tunes ago. Yeah, that thing could have pulled all sorts of timing and thrown a bunch of lights at you. Yeah. It's all right, though. All the lessons I learned are the ones that were really hard. That's the ones I remember. I barely remember things I've won. It's the losses that stick with me. All right, 800 feet. Be on the right. 600 feet, 500 feet. Slow down. I'm going to guess the, it's a checkered flag. I'm going to guess the checkered flag. The giant shop out back? We Not this one. This one. Gravel, right? Yeah. All right. Going to... Yep, you here. I guess I'm going across this lawn a little bit. Right to the back? Yep. This giant shop with the other giant shop next to it? Yep. All right. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Like, dude, this is best case scenario. When I tell you, three Haas machines in there. Dude. Like, ripping. And yeah. like a million top fuel blocks. Yeah. Yeah, and he told me he's the only guy in town that fixes billet or cast aluminum top fuel blocks. All the teams bring their stuff here. That's awesome. Yeah, I saw a stack of them on, with yeah. some pretty gnarly carnage in them. Yeah. yeah. If we can't fix our engine here, like, we just... Turn in our man cards. That's fair. Okay. Do uh, you want me to hold the front? Someone's, yeah, I'll hold you the front. It? You, you unbolt, unbolt it? You hold it? I'll bolt it? All right. Yeah. Let me hold it up. Okay. So a week ago, David Freiberger and I were in Brownsburg, Indiana, where we're at right now filming Roadkill as we went to Richie Crampton's shop to work on the Hemi Grammy. And uh, no, we were at Johnny Lindbergh's shop, but Richie was there. We hung out with those guys for about a day, had a bunch of fun, and then we drove the Hemi Grammy back to Madison, Illinois for the start of Drag Week, and we stored it at Mike Cotton's place. And then when all this went south, I called Richie and I said, hey, I'm looking for gaskets and bearings and, and Hemi parts, and you're, you're in Hemi country here in Brownsburg, so do you know anyone? And he said, yes, you need to call Jake Sanders because he's got it all. And boy, was he right, dude. It is really good to meet you in person. Is that a drone in a tree? Drone yeah, man, you got a little free tree trimming right now. Just a little off the top, man. You can do it. Try to make it round. There it is. He's free. He flew it out? No. Dude, <laughs> bud. if you could land it on top of the deck of the ramp truck to prove it really happened, that would be sweet. Yeah, bring it over here. Let's inspect this real quick. This is incredible that this thing still works. I only parked mine in three feet of water in a lake. You hit a tree and it's still working. Incredible. Yeah, dude. Nice work. That's how those blades do. Incredible. Doing? Obstacle avoidance there. So mine hovered up slowly, just there was a branch and it hovered into a branch and that was it. It was done right into a lake. You flew through a tree and landed it here. You're way better at this than I am. I'm going to keep wrenching. Welcome to Snake Enterprises. It doesn't have anything to do with Don Perdome. I was a little kid, and I liked Jake the Snake, the wrestler. And so all my dad's buddies called me Jake the Snake all growing up, and it stuck. 
I became the crew chief on my dad's Nostalgia Funny Car for since 2010, and the name just stuck. So I had to pick a business name. I thought, uh, I don't know if I want to have racing in the title, so I called it Snake Enterprises because yeah. you never know what we might do in there. We might build oh, race car parts. We might build wood cutting saws for all who knows. Yeah. You never know what's Bro, coming you're out being way too apologetic. Machine. His name is Jake the Snake. This dude rules. We're going to build some kick-ass Hemi motors in there. Oh, why don't you paint it black? This is hot. It's very hot. Car's in the shop. Need to get a motor out of the car. Motor on the engine stand. Flip it over. Bust all the rod bolts loose, all the caps off the rods, shove all the pistons out, um, and then examine every piston, pull the rings off every piston, make sure none of the ring lands have collapsed under the intense heat of what we put it through. And if none of the ring lands have collapsed and all the wrist pins seem okay, we'll start file fitting rings to the bores of the engine block, which is gonna take forever. Basically what you're doing is shoving a ring in there, it collapses, hopefully there's some sort of gap, and then you're filing away the edges of the ring until that gap opens up to a gap that we want. A gap big enough that when there's boost and extreme pressure and heat and the ring gap closes, it doesn't butt the ends of the ring together, but a gap that's not so wide that there's not enough tension on this thing to scrape the oil off the cylinder walls. Because if you don't, then the oil goes up in the combustion chamber and out the exhaust, which is what we have going on right now. We, we don't have enough ring tension. The top ring is not doing its job. Today's job is to fix that and then put this whole thing back together and get on the road. A lot of work. This is very similar to what we did last night, which was just throw it in with our hands, but they have these cool top, this is I guess the top fuel method. Those guys don't play around either. Um, they've got these lift bars that sort of lock in on the head studs and we'll just pull this thing right out. So they're knurled. It's nice, nice piece of equipment. Mike's gonna show you how it's done. I'm gonna do the bolts. I got the, All take, by myself. I'll do the bolts. Mm. So much easier. If you got in front of the tire, it would have been easier. I know, right? There's bolts right on the corner of that bench, Tony. I'll grab this side. Yes. Yep. Oh, oh, right on the threads. We just, we just won't move anymore. Might need to rotate that thing one way or the other. Hold on. Pull that exhaust valve out. Yep. Hold on a sec. You guys all right? Sure, take time. All right. <laughs> this is why they invented engine hoist. There, it ain't coming off now. Step one, break the rod bolts loose. Then leave the socket on there and gently tap the bolt down. That'll get the rod cap separated. You can see they're serrated, so they're in there real good. They're locked together, yeah. And then basically what you want to do is gently get the piston to go out without the rod smacking the crank journal and mm -hmm. making a mark on it, because that's bad. Yeah, that's the goal. First time I ever rebuilt an engine, did it with my neighbor in our cul-de-sac, basically. Used plastic gauge to measure the bearing clearances. That's the way you do it. And, uh, it wouldn't turn over. We ended up wiring three batteries in series. It still wouldn't turn over. You have to leave the plastic gauge in there? Apparently none of us could read decimal points it's or numbers. It's the plastic gauge is tough to read, man. It had no clearance. Yeah. And I don't even know how, I don't know how we got them all in without rotating the motor over. All right, ready? Yeah. You all right? The position that you're in right there is about the time the motor's already in. The guy comes by and he's like, one hour, be in the water box. And you're like, woo. Oh, man. Okay. That's gnarly. Right. Now that every piston and rod are out, what we're doing yeah, as is long as the rings move, making sure the rings move and then grabbing the rod and the piston and making sure you can't twist the rod on the wrist pin because that would be bad. Making sure everything moves freely. Looking at the bearings to make sure they're just not absolutely destroyed, and it really doesn't look like they are. Some of these bearings look great. There's a few that look like they had some trash go through them, but I think we can just gap some rings and put this thing back together. Gap some rings, and we'll gap some fools out there. There you go. Don't go to gap a piece. Right. Not for lunch or dinner. 
So it took us about an hour, I think, to get the car in here, get the engine out, and get the pistons out. How quickly can you guys work in an hour? Like, how much do you accomplish in an hour? You need to be back running again and on the starting line. In an hour. In an hour. So you guys will roll a top fuel dragster, funny car, into the pit, and in one hour, motors out, heads off. Yeah, if the, you, you take you the guys. heads off, push the rack out, put a clutch in it, and if the crankshaft is good, there's no, no black on the crankshaft, no burned up rod journals, and the motor, short block stays in, then you can start putting the clutch in right away, rack can go back in, and the heads are going back on in 20-ish minutes from the time the car gets to the pit area. I believe it. You don't even take the zoomies off. They're on the head, no. right? We, yeah, they, we don't even run the same cylinder heads twice. Like it goes in, it gets completely stripped, all the valves come out every lap. Every lap. Every lap. All the valves come out. You look at all your locks, retainers, check the spring tension or wow. pressure. And yeah, the rods and pistons come completely apart. We measure the rods center to center distance. Okay. Because in one run, it will Pressure. compress. Wow. Like if the tune-up's off, I've seen it compress over a hundred thousandths in one run. Jesus. Which is not common. That's but if lot. like if it drops a hole, yeah, that's not good. Okay. So when you see the white smoke come out mm -hmm. and it's dropped the hole, yes. that can that can just under under a fuel hammering it. It's basically a hydraulic cylinder inside there. Right, and you can't compress the liquid, so yeah. That's... And then that's how they end up over there. <laughs> on the other you. side of the shop. So are you, on, you, you know, when you're not on a race weekend, are you sitting there going, "That one's coming in." That yeah, one's if you watch in. it on TV and <laughs> you, like there's oil on the side of the Goodyear, mm -hmm. it's like, "Ooh, yep, I'll see that one on Tuesday oh, for sure." Man. Job so. security. Yeah, I think the safety safari hands out my business card sometimes. <laughs> All right. Just baby little guys. Which ones, the rings? All of it. Oh, really? Yeah, do you have one that we can compare yeah. ours to a top fuel tube? Yeah. That'd be rad. Yep. Oh, we have a spare piston. We have a spare yeah, piston. A funny car piston and rod. Whoa. So you use a button. So yep. The wrist pin is That's cool. one inch, 156 thou diameter. So it's even thicker it's than huge. a heavy wrist pin, like a factory one. Yeah. Wow. Look how really? wide the rod is compared to ours. I mean, your rod's not exactly a slouch either, but yeah. That's... Yeah. Dude, look how the rod, thick the like skirt the width is. here, we run a 4187 bore, and mm -hmm. this width here is barely smaller than the bore. It just fits. Yeah. Dude, look how much thicker everything is. The skirt's thicker. You they don't even scalp the sides for the wrist pin. No. They need all the support. You need wow. every bit you can get because it, it collapses. The piston will compress over time. Like this blue marker mm. on here, that is minus two. Like So that rod from a brand new one is 2,000 shorter. Ooh. So we measure all the pistons and rod assemblies overall yeah. and try to get them within 2,000 of each other over all eight uh -huh. so that when they go in the engine, we tune the cylinders with different compression. Like the front two in this car yeah. are 80,000 shorter than the back five. And then number three oh. is, I think, 60,000 short compared to the back is that five. The, or what? the way the blower puts air into the manifold, yeah, and you, this car is a limited fuel volume car okay. because it's the rules are based on like the 70s. Mm -hmm. So, but even on a modern day top fuel car, we still do, there's multiple different piston heights so in the engine. Instead of. You, tuning how much fuel is going into each cylinder you're tuning the cylinder itself yeah you we try to run equal fuel okay so if it, this particular cylinder gets more air because of the way the blower forces it in like we put shoes in the manifold to push the air to the back right. and different things there's everybody's got their own little like ouija board of yeah. things in the manifold and i guess that would be the one top secret thing that you can't see in here that's fine i can imagine it i'll lay, so, in, I'll lay in bed at night and uh, figure out my ouija board well, you could see it, but they can't. <laughs> I do want to see it. I do want to see it. See, if you just broke your Hemi, then maybe you could see it. But you didn't break your Hemi. I broke my Hemi, so I could see it. That's what I'm going to tell my wife. I'm like, you don't understand, baby. I know it was a lot of money, but I got to see the Ouija board. So I have a similar one, but it's by them, by Total Seal. It's probably it the same looks thing. just like that. But probably one company makes them. It's been a while since I did it. So you need uh, to set it for the bore size first, right? Yeah, the easiest way is you set it in here against this and it's you square it hold it and, and then adjust that over adjust this out and then 
this is supposed to, you're supposed to be able to just set it in there, mm -hmm. in that, basically push it in, and it's touching the ID of this and this, and your square on this is parallel with the cutting wheel. Yep. Tighten that up, flip that down or up, and then oh. this whole thing it's moves in and out, and you have a dial indicator. So once you do the first one and you kind of get, yeah. like, sometimes the wheel flexes a little or whatever you might have to cut, 34 off to get 32 right right or whatever gonna yeah like they'll, yep once you get like the first two it's like the old days of the hand crank one right. where you use like 89 cranks you guide you to, yeah. Yeah. Yep, yeah, squeeze yeah, it like yeah, this yeah. much and yeah. 90 cranks yeah that's how i learned how to i switched because it's 89 cranks with a certain amount of pressure but yes. then your hand gets tired you don't yes. push as hard and that's 94 you uh -huh. know <laughs> this is a lot better yep <laughs> shout out to total seal for overnighting these because we weren't going to find these. Our engine bore is way bigger than what he's got here, but his engine's way more powerful. All right, so pistons fit in the bore of the engine. It's actually the piston ring that is doing all the sealing and taking all the force. There's an oil ring at the bottom and then essentially two sealing rings. And more or less, uh, the top one is doing the majority of the work, but they have to fit in. There's sort of a, uh, a balance between sealing and being loose enough that when it gets hot, they're yeah, they expand when they get hot. Exactly. So you put the gap in there so that when they are hot, they don't butt against each other. And when lock everything, they basically they'll twist this way and break your piston if there's not enough gap and you get it too okay. hot. So you want enough, you want a small enough gap to maximize compression and power and sealing, but a big enough gap that when it's hot, everything still moves happily. And that's what we're gonna yep. set right now. You set them a little bit differently. Um, because turbo cars or forced induction cars versus a non naturally aspirated car is going to have different cylinder and heat pressure. Pressure, and yeah. temperature, yep. So there's your top ring. This is a tool steel ring. The second ring is a ductile iron one, and it's a Napier style, and I think that's named after the guy that invented it, but it's got an edge right there to scrape the oil off the cylinder wall, and that has to point down. If you put it in like that, which the, with the hook facing up, you'll basically have a motor like we just had with oil coming out the top and out the bottom and out the pipes and everything else. So I'm going to put them on the bag when they're done. But I'm going to give them to you and you're going to measure them, right? Or you're going to start the Yeah, yeah. Yep. You want to do a top ring and then a second ring? Um, you can start putting them back Yeah, in. one more yep. at a time. Right. So that was two. There's two. But yeah, let's start with one and measure it. Well, this one's a little tight. That's a problem. That one doesn't want to spin. What hole is this? Number three. three. Okay, so three. So cylinder three is the one that had the most oil coming out of it, and that top ring doesn't want to rotate. It's that, tight. It does move in and out, but it is tight. Yeah, that's... That's, that's less than ideal. Now yeah, we got the ring land in this one. Yeah, I know. Hopefully this is the hopefully this is the only one. So if you look right here, it's a nice machined groove right there. And then you get right here and it gets kind of rough. That's because this ring land has fallen down, which makes this ring tight and it doesn't want to move. This ring land has also moved because this ring is pinched. So that means it got hot enough to not only take the tension out of these rings, but also start compromising the lumen of this piston. We have a spare, so if this is the only one that's wrong, cool. No big deal. This piston needs to be changed. See how hot it got? That's where the combustion gases went past the ring gap. Uh, it's not even round anymore. Yeah. It flared the ring out, it's wider there. It's not, oh, even, yeah, it's not, not even round anymore. The pre ignition, like the piston's coming up and the explosion is happening and it's putting all that downward pressure on it. It's, that's what's collapsing the, the crown. Yeah, that ring and that piston are trashed. Hopefully that's the only one. Three was the worst. Three was the one that had all the oil coming out of the valve cover. So with any luck, we can use our one spare. This does not even want to come out of the piston. I'm wearing it Friday though. Oh. Friday. All right, uh, I'm just going to stop what I'm doing. Because that second ring doesn't even want to come out of the piston. Say what? That second ring doesn't even want to come out of the piston. But I think 
Yeah, the wrist pin's still good, so we'll take our wrist pin out, our rod out, hang it on our new slug, and cross our fingers that the rest of them are okay. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my hands, strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand, oh I've been running from the law, hope they won't shoot me down soon. Here's an update, things are going good by a universal miracle. We smoked one piston and all the rings on the rest. Um, we actually collapsed the ring lands in that one there, and I have a spare, just one. It's incredible. So right now, uh, Tony is finishing gapping the rings to each individual bore. I've pulled the rings off the old pistons. I'm cleaning the pistons, and um, you're changing that slug to our new one then we can just start putting things back together. We're gonna clean out the engine block real good, lube everything real well, and just start the other process of reassembly, which is really exciting. So we don't have a high-end ring compressor. We got the classic Super Expando one. And uh, it uh, it's adjustable. It's in the ballpark of what we need, yeah. you know? I think we'll make it happen. All right. We're lubed. Oh, okay. So that one's lined up with the pin. That one's lined up with the pin. I didn't move it, so I think we're cool. The ARP makes these really cool ones that are all custom sized and it's just a ring. And you just lay it in there and hit it with a hammer and it goes right in. This is not that. No. But this will work. Should be. Okay, ready? I'm gonna let go of it. Okay, I got it. All Come on, baby. Nope. Oh, well. You did? Nope. I can see the oil ring. It's not. It wants to jump up right here. Oh, yeah. It's not flat. You gotta loosen it a little bit? Yeah, loosen it up some. Yeah, rotate it. The problem is, is this wire sticks up and you, it's not allowing that ring compressor to get flush with the top of the sleeve. So the ring pushes out before it goes inside the sleeve. So we're gonna make, uh, build aluminum one that registers down on the ID of this, that basically makes it to where there is no gap for the ring to jump out. This is not normal, but it's really cool. So, Never forget where we are. We're in a garage slash shop behind Jake's house. Jake's job is to rebuild top fuel engine blocks, hemi blocks. So he's got CNC machines in here and welders and all kinds of things. And his other part of the business is he makes parts for companies that need parts. They send him a drawing or he makes a drawing, they machine parts. Well, our ring compressor wasn't working. So he's gonna make one. He's gonna turn that solid chunk of round aluminum into a round ring compressor that we can slide our piston through and it'll go right in the block and we'll be just hauling butt on assembling the motor after that. 
This is not normal. This isn't something you do in a parking lot. I'm gonna have them autograph it because this is the kind of thing I keep forever and uh, use over and over and over again every time I need to rebuild the Hemi. So the super expander ring compressor isn't doing the job. They busted out the CNC, wrote a program, and made one. And it needs a little tweaking, but it's 9 o'clock at night. And uh, I don't know what the next move is here. Uh, I've almost run out of parts to clean. The intake's cleaned and scraped. The heads are cleaned. Head studs are ready. If that thing works, this thing just falls together quick. This is good. Imagine doing this in a parking lot. <laughs> Shout out to Eric and Jake Rizwarski. Still using the toolbox, bros. Your autographs are still on there. Thank you. Ooh, got one going in. Do it. Yes! Now we can build a motor. You got it? Yep. Woo! Okay. One down, seven to go. Success. Our custom made billet ring compressor totally works and now pistons and rods are flying into the motor. It's about to get busy right now. Copper gaskets with one piece cut out of copper, so you can reuse them. But we're gonna clean them up a little bit and put some sealant around the water port holes. Last one. So then we turn the motor over and torque everything. Pretty late, still looking at an, en an engine block here. But yeah, I'm good. I'm getting tired, and at the same time I'm getting excited because the bottom end is back together. So, means we can keep going. Goal for tonight is to get it running, get the car completely back assembled. I don't necessarily care if it fires up right away or if we fire it at the track, but I'd like to leave and get close, if not at Cordova, so that we can be there in the morning to hang out and be ready to leave with the rest of the lunatics that are still doing Hot Rod Drag Week. the hell out of it. I'll get the nuts.
It is gorgeous out. It's going really well, but it's nearly 10 o'clock at night. All the parts stores are closing and we're starting to discover we're missing things like an oil filter. But I had one, you know, the last two days when we were inside of Worldwide Raceway. But, uh, you know, a lot, a lot happened there. I don't know if I still have it. And it could have ended up on Freiberger's engine, for all I know. But I did own an oil filter. There's the oil filter. We got one. Boom. Okay. So there was once upon a time where we were absolutely prepared for a drag and drive event. So prepared that we redid our trailer and added these lights and a solar panel charging system, the whole deal. Except that was the drag and drive event that we showed up with uh, one of the shift rods on my transmission in backwards and money shifted it and broke the Hemi. <laughs> so we've never actually enjoyed the lights, you know, in a parking lot party with good friends or even on the side of the road broke down. We've yet to be able to use these. Maybe tomorrow night. I'm looking for some this stuff called copper spray. I'm just trying to put a little bit of ceiling uh, performance back into that copper head gasket and not have to like grease it up with a bunch of silicone. Um, so it's a spray, it'll lay down like a very thin uh, ceiling surface just to seal up the water jacket between the head and the block. Just where, you know, thick physical silicone on there is going to be difficult to manipulate into a way that it works for everybody. And not get it to squirt all over the place. When that head gets clamped down to the block, it's going to get very thin. I think it's going to spread that silicone everywhere and get it into places we don't want it. You know? So it'll be fine either way. One way or another, it's gonna go together. This is just a copper head gasket. It's one piece of stamped copper, um, but it does come with like a very fine coating that will seal the water jackets and stuff. And all we're doing with our spray is essentially going to make sure that it seals again because we knocked all that coating off and now we're gonna fix it. Where'd I put that can? There she is, all right. It's not gonna hurt it. It's gonna no. grow like 12 thousandths of an inch. Yeah. It'll be fine. But it gets, allows the oil to get up there and not burn any push rods. Okay. Because I would imagine this isn't gonna build oil pressure like that. Probably not. It's not gonna idle with 220. 
Is that what that idle's at? Uh -huh. Holy cow. When you first started. 420 what? PSI? Mm-hmm. First started with a fresh 70 weight, it's 220. If it ain't 220, your pump's junk. <laughs> wow. Did you say 70 weight? Yeah. yeah gear oil in the motor. Man. In the How long does it take to pour that in? <laughs> uh, like motor honey. Not long. Funnel with a big hole. Oh my goodness. gas here gotta be honest I'm tired uh, but motivated because engine is together it's almost ready to go in the car we're gonna put the valve covers on next and then hoist it in the air with the forklift and put the clutch on uh, before we do that let's talk about spark plug tubes because uh, we talked about these earlier we modified them I don't know what happened but at some point we had two that just were completely blown out that's what it should look like because the gasket of the spark plug bottoms out in here and holds the tube and helps seal it. Uh, we have one, this is number three. This is our worst one, the one that was puking oil out everywhere. That one is completely exploded out. And uh, I'm sure I'm the one that did it. I don't know how I did it, but we needed new ones. So Sean Dill brought these over to us. Also the gaskets we needed to put the uh, engine together. So for that, I'm very thankful. And we're gonna replace our two junk ones with the two freshies and then put the motor in the car. It's not tapped that deep. This is off top of the off. So, I mean, this hole could be, but it's not. The bottom bolts looks like it's right. Top bolt, no. So how about we do this? And then when we find the right bolts. So we're just running an issue where the overall length between distributor, oil pump drive, and oil pump is too long. So either like we bolt it up and the distributor wants to hang out, or we get down and then the pump won't bolt onto the block. So we're taking a little bit of material off the center piece, the oil pump drive, and trying to dial everything in so it's happy. Right, no problem. Put the distributor back down. Yeah. There it is. So your motor, that never sat all the way down, right? I don't think. I, know. Yeah, I, need I feel like I feel like I'd always see that O-ring. I know everybody was half asleep when it got put in. I could always see that O-ring. Yeah, it was never like that. It's official, the engine is together. I mean, minus the supercharger. So now we shuffle. I think the funny car is gonna stay where it's at, but Lesme's gonna move, the engine's gonna move, a forklift's gonna appear from nowhere, and uh, we're gonna put the clutch on this and put it in the car. Yeah, give it a little bump. Okay, coming in. Yeah, that's good. Okay, going up. Yeah. You can't be in too far because you're gonna run into the back of the car. Sure. All right. Go ahead. How are we looking on all our sensors and the mag drive? We like that? Everything's good? Yeah, I can move off my I finger. Mean, we're not pinching the spark plug wires on the other side? Nah, nothing really. No, okay, nothing major. How are we looking going underneath on the side of the block? All right. good, both sides? Yeah, send it. Okay, going up. There you go. All right. <laughs> Ready to put the engine in the car and I was sitting here thinking about the next steps and a little problem. Um, I don't know if you heard, but we might have borrowed Freiburger's Gremlin and attempted to put our Hemi in there. No. Wow, I'm tired. We might have borrowed Freiburger's Gremlin and attempted to put his Hemi in our car. 
and our dowels for the bell housing made their way from our engine block to his engine block and they're adjustable dowels. Uh, they're offset. You can spin them and when you spin them they move the bell housing in relation to the center line of the crankshaft. And you have to do that with a manual gearbox because if it's not perfectly in line or within like five thousandths of an inch of the center line of the crank, these things don't want to shift very well. Well, it was all set up at my house. Now that we've removed the dowels, we have to set it up again. So instead of just bolting the engine to the trans, right now we've got to take the bell housing off the trans, bolt it to the back of the engine block, use some sophisticated measuring equipment and figure out whether we're centered or not or within five thousandths of an inch. So I know it's like one in the morning, but we have to do this. Otherwise, the car is not going to want to shift very well. So here we go. More steps, more things. Put it up there and spin it around. We'll see. We can put this through the hole. So. Yeah. Got to go down over here. It's the Grand Canyon. Okay. It's one o'clock in the morning, we're dial indicating the bell housing, so it's perfectly centered on there, so that when we're at the racetrack in nine minutes, it's gonna shift perfectly. Plus 10. Up. That right there, there that's go. between it, yep. no rust. So right there. On this disc, push forward. Oops, sir. Okay, good. Go up, go up, go up, go up. Up two inches. Come on in. Very good. Uh, yeah, come on down five inches. Forward. Forward, a couple inches, keep going, keep going, keep going. Stop out there, good. Uh, can you come past your side a little bit? Okay, let me do a little, oop, other way, side shift. That's good. Like that. All right, I'm gonna put a bunch of angle on it. Drive it in. In? In. Okay. It's gotta go down. I know. Come on down a little bit. What if you turn the steering you to there the you Hold on, I think I'm at hold right. right. Not hold on. Will that pitman arm go to where it got clearance? It went in further. Turn the wheel. Now. I just got it into the car. Good. I think we're real close. Because if you turn the wheel, you're gonna gain some clearance one way, right? Yeah, a little bit. I think if we just lift the back of the motor up just a hair, it'll go past the steering. There, there we go. There it is. It went. That's it. Now we're, we're now we're in business. There she is. There it's loose now. I cannot go down. Hold on. Let's get a little twist. The trans has got to come up on the passenger side of the motor. It's got to go like this. The motor just has to come down on the passenger side. Then we'll get in the, then we go in the dowel pins and then we'll be in business. There it is. Close. A little more. Come down a little, Jake. Oh, there you go. Hold on. Oh, oh yeah, I like that. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. It's moving. We're tight over here. All right, start bolting stuff in. There it is, almost. We just get a couple bell housing bolts in, we'll be in business. Now we can drop it on the motor plate. All right. There you go. a boy. That's good, I like it. Watch that. That's it. 
4.30 in the morning. We've been here 20 hours and it's time to, no, close, I don't know, 16. Almost time to fire this thing up. This has been quite a day. All right, you want oil pressure or fuel, fuel leak check? Okay. Why does it sound so good? What's going on? All right, ready to check for fuel leaks? You think you, you, think you got pressure already on a, on a dry motor? It's gonna prime it right now. I'm drip free on my side. Do it again? Oh, it's, it's got pressure. You sure? Yep. One more, give me one more. All right, here we go. Looks good to me. Do you want to crank it again and make sure you got oil pressure? Sure. Yeah, let's do that a little more. It takes a second. Yeah. It's pulling this down. It's pulling this down. We got to tighten that up more. What happened? Like it's pulling this. Oh. This is pulling, like it's pivoting on the sound. Okay. Like All right. Okay. good. What's up? That wasn't good or normal. Did it backfire? No fuel. I put fuel in the tank. Is it? Are these run right? Uh, it's got fuel pressure. Did it just backfire? Like it didn't backfire like the belt's not loose so it didn't try to run backwards. Timing could be a little wonky but it sounded pretty good. Idle's doing this. I think that's a timing thing. It runs though. It's live. Yeah, it's like it's. It might just be way retarded because it's getting the header hot quick. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't sound correct. Um, but it's live. Yeah, we got locked the timing tomorrow and adjust it. Yeah. Whew. Well, it runs. Made oil pressure and it idled. It had 70 pounds of oil pressure. 60 pounds of fuel pressure, 70 pounds of oil pressure. I jump up and down, but I just don't have it in me. Thank you, everybody. Oh, yeah. There you go. Whew. Another one, first start. We ain't ever had one start here in the building that leaked on the first warm up. Is that right? This Thank record you. holds true. <laughs> Boom. Oh, man. I'm dead. It's the same day. We left here at five in the morning. We got the car fired up. It didn't sound amazing because we're pretty sure the ignition timing is not happy, but that's easily fixable. No longer smoking out of the pipes, which means we have oil control. And now that I've had time to look at the data log, we have a good explanation for why, you know, what happened and when it happened and how it happened and all that good stuff. So let me put on the specs so I can actually read this. Uh, if looking at this green line, that is my throttle position. So you can see I'm granny shifting it. I'm wide open. Drops for every every gear change, right? Now, your blue line is fuel pressure. We had it at the beginning of the run. 60 pounds of fuel pressure, which is what it should leave the line with. As soon as it sees boost, 76 PSI. So we're making 16 pounds of boost because the regulator is boost reference to the intake. It will raise the fuel pressure one PSI for every pound of boost. So, yeah. And it's one to one. They're not all one to one, but this one is. This one is. So first gear, we are good. We're trucking. It actually spun off the line. We're doing good. So second gear, as soon as I granny shift and the nose dropped, what fuel was in the tank ran forward and we lost fuel pressure. It went from 76 to 14. As soon as that happens, our EGT starts climbing. So. Green is throttle position, blue is fuel pressure, this light greenish blue, that's our EGT of the cylinder we smoked, 
All right, so here's the starting line. I leave the line, first gear change, granny shift. Fuel pressure still climbing. Second gear granny shift, as soon as the nose comes down, our fuel pressure drops to 14. Our EGT starts climbing. We are at 1100 degrees in the pipe of exhaust gas temperature. Now we're wide open again. Our fuel pressure climbs briefly, but in the middle of third gear, it nose dives all the way down to 15 PSI. And it is at 15 PSI for Ever. a full second. Then the gear change, it recovers a little bit, but not much. We click it into fourth, and at this point, we're in trouble. We have basically 16 PSI through the tail end of the run, all through fourth gear, and our EGT has now climbed over 1,200 degrees. It goes as high as 1,230 degrees in cylinder number five, which I believe is the piston we smoked. Yeah. So for correlation here, not enough fuel in the tank. It's sloshed forward on every gear change. And at some point it was just so low, we didn't have fuel pressure. And I ran it out the back door, not knowing that. Exhaust gas temperatures indicate everything in the chamber was super hot. Didn't put a hole in the piston, but it collapsed a ring land just enough to pinch a ring and knock the tension of all the other rings, which is why we had a bunch of smoke coming out of the pipes. But we had a spare piston, we replaced it, changed all the rings, I believe this thing is good, and as long as we put enough fuel in there, we should be cool. So we're gonna set ignition timing right now. Four seconds, dog. Four seconds on throttle. You see it? Five to oh, nine, at the, at the five end? seconds. Yeah, at, at the end, it's from five. basically from 14 to 18 right there. Like from here to there, it didn't have fuel pressure. From four to nine, it's five seconds on throttle. It's a long, it's a long ass time. What? So the first time it was about two tenths of a second, then it was almost two seconds. Yeah. Then right here, That's it still is- still not enough there. Right here, it is from eight, it's four, two, and a tenth. Like it's, it's all bad. It's there. Hold on. Okay. It's like eight. Eight, yeah. Because TDC is here. And 10, I saw 10 up here. Yeah, 10, and then we were two under. What was it reading? Eight. eight. Okay, I'll put it at 20, okay? Okay. And then I can not move this and you can just change the offset too. Whichever, let's see where we get to. Actually, I'm gonna put it at 26. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. Put it at 15. I haven't done anything. I just tried to start it. Okay, cool. Go ahead. It's ratcheting back and forth. What the forth. hell? Are you moving it? I'm not moving anything. The computer is moving around though. You don't have it locked. I know, I never got a chance to. Oh, okay. You gotta give me a minute. <laughs> All right, don't do anything. I mean, it's not gonna be perfect till we get it dialed in. It idles high and then it-, it Did you say, what is it having it right now out there? Right now, it's basically exactly where, hold on. So where it's idling, it's commanding 26. But what is it out there? Hold on. Wait, you had it locked? I didn't even get a chance to do it. Okay, you're saying it's commanding 26? I'm saying, it, I'm saying it's already commanding 26. I got what you're saying. <laughs> the mark was way above it. Yep. So, what's your mark at? That's weird. 15. 15, so it's way below by at least five or six degrees, so it's still yeah. around that eight number then. Yeah. Are we almost out of if, adjustment? If I was gonna come up. Well, it's a little stressful, because uh, when it went back together, 
the ignition, the ignition timing changed a whole bunch. Like it's sitting there at six degrees when we fire it up. Um, so Tony's out there adjusting the crank trigger, but it's doing something else where it fires up, runs okay for a few seconds, then the idle speed drops a little bit, and then it pops and shuts off. Um, and I don't know if that's just because we have so little timing in it right now, but uh, at some point he's gonna run out of adjustment in that crank trigger, and yeah, I don't know. This is exactly where it started. Physically where it was with the motor before we started messing with it. Okay. Give it a rip. All right, ready? Yeah. I do, you gotta argue and I have to offset it, it's way off. What is it off? It was reading. TDC was up here. Yeah, it was reading like after top dead yeah. center. Yeah. Oh, did you got okay. The wheel goes on anyway. There's a mark on What's the it? wheel. What'd you say? There's a mark on the wheel. Uh-huh. It, it goes on in a certain to the balancer? Yeah. Okay. So There's when I put it on, we had the motor at 25. And I lined the magnet up with the center of the crank trigger, and I didn't see it was a particular mark. Yeah, that's what. There's that's like an engraved mark on it. We might just be in between. So all we're doing right now, when you have something, uh, a computer that's completely controlling the timing, uh, we're just physically confirming that the engine is where the computer thinks it is. So we are shining a time light at it, we are locking the time in the computer, because normally it can control it and move it all over the place, and we're aiming for it to be 15 degrees. You can pick a value and lock it in. Uh, and as long as we get that, we know that the tune's gonna be right, everything's gonna be good. And if it's not, which is not for us, there's a couple ways to do it. We can offset it in the computer, or we can physically move the pickup here. But either way, once we get the computer saying, it's locked at 15, and I can visually confirm, yes, the motor's at 15, everything should be dandy. It fires up, but when it's idling, I have the computer, the cell's all lined to 20 degrees, but on the timing light, what did you say it was showing? Five after top dead center. On the timing light, it's showing five after top dead center. Don't do it that way. You need to do it in the software and lock it out. He's saying that's what we did. Right. We did all, we did yeah, all. in the software, I have the cells set at 20, and, and that's where the, but do I have to physically go in there and do the fixed timing deal? Yes. Absolutely. It's gonna be really loud. Do you want me to hang up and call you back? Hold on. No, that's fine, go ahead. Okay, hold on. What's it locked at? It's locked at 20. All right, sometimes you want to lock it after it's already running, because it might be tough what? to start. Sometimes you got to lock it after it's running. It might not want to start, but 20 is fine. Go ahead. It'll be fine. Do you hear that, Brian? Do it again. Yeah, it's a little funny. Okay, here we go. Go ahead. So yeah, it's 25 degrees off. All right, system, ignition parameters, configure. Rep, all right, you want the reference angle or the delay? Yeah, we'll do the reference angle. It's 55 degrees already. Yeah, you're going to have to move it then. Yeah. Tony, it's got to be moved. We can't do it here. All the clock out, number one, TDC. Yeah. Go 55 before TDC on your balancer. Uh huh. And then look at your crank trigger magnet and your sensor. This should line up at that point. At 55. That's okay. That's reference angle. Right, that makes right. sense. Oh. That makes sense. All right, we got it. We are good now. 55 before, and then Take you guys should be able to move it. Yeah. All right, we got it. All right. Thanks, brother. No problem. I'll call you back. That's your problem. Yeah, I don't know. The stock would get in there. It would suck anyway. Ready? Yep. Carry on. You're 180, so you got a ways to go. Okay. 100. A little bit. You're 60. Stop. Back me. Well, I want to tighten that thing with the pointer up anyway so we can do. Well, actually, no, you're right. I like that one. That's 55? Yeah. Okay. So now we're 54. I'll come back. Go back and have one. Right, one, two. Yeah. 
Yep, oh, too far. Good. Just a little more. I got it. I got your own. I got it. I just gotta get my finger in there. Push it real good. A little bit. Just a little bit. You have 45 minutes to set the ignition timing. Well, we're out. It's fun when you gotta change the crank trigger position on a top fuel car with the belly pan on and it's on the ground. <laughs> they got a, a full got pan a underneath there? Yeah. There's a guy with a bunch of circled roundy round stuff, but also like more modern stuff, working some little like shop by my house. And if you're walking down this path, you can see he's got a 68 just sitting in the grass. I'm like, that thing's sick. Like just even just sitting there, I'm like, man, number one, I want that thing. And number two, like it just looks so good. I prefer the 68 because the it has the whole chrome. The whole thing is end, so you know? sick, yeah. It's nice. oh, so good. It is nice. Yep. When I was in high school, my neighbor, his grandmother gave him her 68 Firebird and it had 40,000 original miles on it. And it was like completely stock. Just perfect car. And he hated it because it was green on green. And, uh, and he did everything he could to make it cool. But by the time he graduated high school, he was like, I hate it, it's green on green. And he, he sold it for like 4,000 bucks. It was such a clean car. Let's see if I can pull it. Just go like this. Just hold this right here. Now that we know where we're at, where the tree wheel needs to be, like this. <laughs> So I have a Mark at 15. You're at like maybe 21. It's say it's 20 and a half. Yeah, it's I leave it alone. Close enough. Yeah. Uh, split hairs. Yeah, we just had he just locked it at 20. I mean, it I can't. It sounds even. so much better. And it's not smoking. Hell yeah. I feel like That's right. You dialed in now. One last one last check. Just pull the dipstick for me. What? Just one last check. Pull the dipstick for me. The dipstick? Yeah. I have a history right of there. I'm not playing. Yeah, give me I have a, a history of Hemi's not staying water tight, you know? It's, I got okay. P, I got PTSD about that. It's fixed. We're out of here. We just need to put the front clip back on, put it in street mode, load it up and get out. Yeah, it sounds awesome. We did it. It sounds right now. Post? I'm going to lock down the idle wherever I'm out where it was. Um one day engine I rebuild. Work. Yeah, now it's style. Uh, your boy wants to go around the block, and I think that seems right. I feel like we should. So street mode is pretty simple. We change out the rear Mickey Thompson ET drag slicks for Mickey Thompson ET street tires, which are treaded and are way better in uh, moisture, rain, that sort of thing. Uh, we put the side pipes back in because this car is ridiculously loud, even with the side pipes. But the bull horns put the noise directly in front of your face. The side pipes put it right behind your head. So it's not nearly as bad. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll change the tune in the computer and we'll switch fuel tanks. Over here on the right, we have a four and a half gallon fuel cell that has E85 in it. That's what we race with. E85 is great because the ethanol content takes that hot air coming out of our blower shop roots blower and cools it down enough to safely put a bunch of boost in the motor. But on the street, it's hard to find. Um, and it's just really not practical. So over here, we have a 16 gallon fuel cell that you fill through the factory fuel door. That's just got pump gas in it. So we'll run off of that. We'll switch a couple of fuel lines, change the tune. Uh, we're gonna load the car right now, make as many miles as we can, and then treat this like a street car because really that's what it is. We're done and uh, 
we might as well test drive it and uh, it would be totally weird to show up here, invade the shop, use everything and leave without giving Jake here a ride. So that's what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna load it up and head towards Madison. Hopefully, you know, we make it up there in time where we can meet up with other drag weekers and unload this thing and go cruising. But if not, we still have the goal of getting back to the first track, which is the end of drag week and see if they'll let, make a see if they'll let us make a pass. And I can't talk anymore because I have no energy. I slept two hours this morning. It's just enough to take him for a ride. Let's go. for you a burnout pad right here. The whole plan is to pave this road so it's asphalt, so just for that reason. Oh, that'll be cool. We're gonna get there one day. Yeah. We've come a long ways from the way it was when I bought this place. So, right or left? Uh, if you go to the right, we can just go around the block once. Okay. Go to this four-way stop up here and take a left. Okay. Seems like it ships all right. Yeah. I'm not even double clutching it, which is really what I should be doing. That's good. And it's not banging in the dump. It feels pretty smooth going in gear. Yeah, I think we got that working good. It's Dude, it five all the way around, so. The tune needs some tweaking. As I say, it, uh, 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 it's 10 to one right now. It's uh, definitely not happy. That's okay though. I mean, it's, it's running, it's not smoking. That's really all I care about right now. Yeah, it's in a way better state than it was 24 hours ago. Definitely. Most people in Brownsburg are used to stuff like this driving around. Yeah, I was gonna say, she didn't really look twice at all. No. Oh, I miss driving this car. It's pretty cool. thing to see it on TV but it's another to like see stuff in person and, and one person's take on their hot rod yeah it's that's, neat that's how I feel like every time I see somebody race at a NHRA event and then I go to a race in person it's different it's yeah. definitely different you know yep yep no it's especially it's, when a fuel car goes by and you feel it in your chest can you change like the tune-up as you're driving? Yeah, I'll put him behind the wheel, plug the laptop in, and just keep leaning out the base fuel table. Okay. And it'll uh, it'll clean it right up because we're targeting like 13 to one, but the base fuel map is so rich that it's not able to compensate enough for it right now. I gotcha. It could do it, but I have the compensation turned down to like 20 percent. Okay. A whole new world, all that. It's great when it works. When your laptop freezes up, you're wishing you had a carburetor or a yeah, a carburetor, you know, a flat blade screwdriver and a five eighths wrench, you know? Yeah. Or it's like, okay, we're we got this. But look at look at the engine, listen to it, and get it. Yeah. Same as like when somebody gives me a like a nostalgia funny car. It's okay. Put this here. Put this here. It'll start and it'll idle, and I'll make my fine tune adjustments from there. And there you go. Go race. Oh, this driveway right here. Right to the ramp truck. I think we can go right to the ramps. I like it. Old. Cool. Well, thanks for taking me around the block. Thanks for all the help. Anytime. That was fun. It you was got, fun. You I, got really cool friends. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty cool. I don't have very many, but they're pretty cool. It's amazing that they're like at five in the morning, skipping school, skipping work, whatever. Yeah, Richie's a solid guy. He really is. He's a super solid guy. He's got a good sense of humor too. Yeah, I know, that's why I like him. He's, you know right where you stand with him too. Yeah, oh yeah. Cool. It runs like poop because it's really rich and I think it's really rich because we changed the pulley. Whatever, you drive it when we get there and I'll tune it and right, it'll be uh, it'll be money. That's window, what do we got? Over here oh, I think it, I think it, I think it's in the toolbox. <laughs> oh, there you go. Good place for it. Yep. All right. All right. 
We're out of here. <laughs> Seems like a bad idea. Here we go. Just gonna keep moving. Bumpier than it looks like. Yeah, we're going off roading. I'd honk, but I got no horn. Beep beep. Ah, oh, we yeah. did it. The old Hemi rebuild. One day a Hemi rebuild. <sighs> Man, that was a lot of work. Not a lot of people, I think, would put that much work into something when you can't win. Well, no. And you only have a vague idea of whether or not they're going to even let you drive your car down the track. And yeah, what is our problem? <laughs> 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 My kind of fun. Yeah, I like it. Why not be everybody's kind of fun? Let's go to Motorhead's Bar and Grill and dump the, dump the car out right there. Right. Get there at 7.30. Maybe we can eat something and then hit the road. Hell yeah. How long does it take us to get there? Three hours and eight minutes. I wonder if they'll still be open. 7.29 we get there. I'm not stopping. We got an hour back. It's good to be moving. Road trips are different when you're stuck in one place for three days. Yep. We were only here 24 hours. We got here yesterday. I don't want to know. Is that right? We got here yesterday. We were here about yeah. 28 hours. We were here at like 1 o'clock yesterday. Yeah, about 28 hours. We rebuilt the entire Hemi minus the crankshaft and out of here 28 hours. So sick week in February is coming up. It'll be here before you know it. Does this experience make you still want to do that? Kind of. Because <laughs> even though it's your car, it won't be any different. I hope it's a little different, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, it might be. I mean, yeah, odds are good you're not rebuilding your engine, but. I can't, but I can't build another Pontiac motor. That's going to take me forever. Like but the, let's have a look. Like the last drag and drive event I did before this one, all we did was blow up a drive shaft and that burned half a day. I can imagine, What's it? yeah, it's gonna take forever, look. So it's like, you don't even have to rebuild the motor, you just have to break something that you can't easily replace and you're you're screwed, you know? And somehow, I still find enjoyment in this torture and this failing and- I do want to rip, man. I mean, like, this has been super fun. I would like to do it and race one. So oh, I'm yeah. in. You need to drive. The, I'm in. The funny thing is, is the driving down the track is such a small oh my part God, of it. minuscule part of it, it. And it's not even like, oh, because you're going fast, it's only 10 seconds or whatever it is. It's it's just that amount of time that you spend in a pit or in a parking lot or on the side of the road versus time driving the vehicle fast. But like, I dig it. Like, we, we met Jake and all his friends, and now I got lifelong friends, dude. Those dudes are awesome. They awesome. were amazing. Not not because they helped, they were just funny as hell. Yeah, they know their stuff, they're super funny. I learned a lot from them, and just, it was cool. The one thing this has kind of put into perspective for me is, oh. you know, a lot of people that are gonna watch this are gonna go, why are you unprepared? Why are you not ready? Why are you untested? And the answer I have to that is, I can either sit at home on the couch, or I can go, well, it's as good as it could be right now. Let's just go and have fun. Yeah. And when you do that, you meet You're rolling Jake. the dice. Yeah. Well, it's not even that. It's like, I think you people are like, why would you case. take it there untested? And you're like, well, I haven't had a free day in 11 weeks. Yeah. It's you just, know, we do our best to make this stuff happen, but we're some pretty busy dudes. It's just how it is. Yeah. Know? And like I said, you could either sit at home on the couch and wait and wait and wait until you can test and make sure it's right and miss out on a lot of memories and people you could meet or you could just go. Yeah, we did it. We took a swing. We did. We did. Yeah, sure, there could be like gauges and warning lights and <laughs> safeguards in the tune, whatever, but like, oh. There will be tomorrow. <laughs> it didn't happen. Didn't happen. There will be tomorrow.
After all that thrashing, at the very end of the road trip, we meet up with Drag Weekers. All worth it. There's like 90 miles to go left to get to the hotel, and then you're basically at the racetrack. So this is pretty cool after this just hellacious week we had to finally see some streetcars doing streetcar things. Ugh. We're gonna go drive. We're gonna go drive for some drag weekers. That feels cool. Be a part of this thing a little bit. Let's start participating. Let's get our gold star for participating. This is literally the last checkpoint in all of drag week. Is it the very last? Yeah, and it's really late, but we did make it, and we figure why not unload the car and drive with other people that are doing drag week. Yeah. The majority of Drag Week is the drive, not really the racing. So it feels like we've had the Drag Week experience just without all the success on the track. But uh, at the same time, I don't feel like I did Drag Week because we haven't done any of the road miles. We haven't seen any of the checkpoints. We haven't hung out with any of the people except at the drag strip. So we're gonna unload the car and try to soak up as much of that kind of fun as we can before the night is over because tomorrow is the last day, last track, last chance to go fast on the drag strip. Headlights, taillights, the whole thing is dead. Oh, the taillights yeah, too? Yeah, taillights are out. That's oh. The whole thing is dead. I'm sure there's some kind of red lights in there. Yeah, magnetic oh, trailer so, lights. Oh, like magnetic ones. Yeah. Lights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I see back. you. I was like, tape them to the fenders. Let's do this. I've got a flashlight no. back here. Oh, <laughs> Just be honest. Else. Comfort. Yeah, get in between two other people. Yeah, we'll put you between us. Hey, I've got two lights. You can have one. I've got a little bit of wire. We can make lights work. Yeah. yeah. But right between us. Right between. My headlights point at the moon, bro. They don't even work, right? <laughs> like, you can do this. The headlight. All right. Oh, cool. Take a rip. Let's go. We do have a gauge on this. The gas gauge, yeah. Oh, yeah. For the street tank, we're legit. <laughs> station to here but that's more driving than we've done all week and uh, feet. i'm very oh, excited good. about the fact that we're finally next to other people that are doing the event yeah even if we're out i'm i'm here to, for everybody i'm part of the journey yeah yeah after this we road trip to the hotel and beers in the parking lot absolutely let's we'll go inside it. let's do it i'd like to see this place motorheads One of the best checkpoints I've ever been to in my life. Look, there's there's a disco ball. There's a like a vintage etch a sketch. Springfield Mile. 
Grand Marshal. Oh, there's tickets to something. Stoplight. Vintage Coke machines. This is incredible. Wow. Old race cars. I keep saying it, but there's a funny car on the roof. There's two of them, actually. This place is incredible. I love Shaky's Pizza. Everything we got from around here is Route 66, local stuff. Shaky's Pizza. You ever had it? The Shaky Pizza? Yeah, you ever had it? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. I grew up on it. It's my favorite pizza of all Me time. Me too. It was right there on South 6th Street here in Springfield. Oh, you had one here? Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought yeah, it was a California that's thing. That's all from Springfield. Look, I got all kinds of stuff from Shaky's around here. From wow. Here. Very cool. Are they still in business here? No. Mm. I don't know if they're still in business. Are they, they are in California. They made a comeback. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is a real They don't one. look like the old English kind of thing. They, they're, it's kind of more modern, like a... Reminds me of kind of like um, Chuck E. Cheese, a lot of kids' games and stuff, you know? Yep, yep. But the pizza and the mojo potatoes are still the, the same. They took out the picnic tables and stuff? No. Did they did back in the original shape? Yeah. They had all the picnic. I'm old oh, they news. So. Player piano in there. And oh, yeah. yeah. I remember all that yeah. from when I was a kid. Yeah. Oh, man. Yep. This place is great. Yep. All this stuff is from Route 66 or Springfield area and that. Wow. Every this is cool. That's kind of, yeah, just, that's the beauty. See that 1915? Yeah. Uh -huh. Tim Wilkerson, a funny car driver, yeah. LRS car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They live here in town, and every year he brings his funny car here, brings it out, and fires up twice. Oh, cool. So we put Tim in that, fired that dang thing up. Is he he drove it around the parking lot a couple times and put it in front of a semi in the LRS car, and they're going to do a feature story on it oh, with cool. Tim sitting in and driving it. Wow. Tim's one of my favorite funny car drivers because he, he, he tunes, he drives, like the whole deal. Yeah, he's talking about it. He's yeah. shopped right That's down the, the street. I did not know that. Oh yeah, they're here about once a week for lunch. That's cool. Supercharger. Yeah. All right, so it's cruising around at 13 to 1 right now. Seems mostly happy. That's pretty good. Unloaded. Wow. It really jumps into those gears with those faceplates, boy. I have not been on the highway with the new trans yet. All right, so it seems really fat right here. Can you hold it there a little bit? Yeah. I'm in that, yeah, I'm saying nine. These, uh, these sensors may be wrecked from being so, so rich. Yeah, you gotta blend that whole thing. 
Right now, steady state, like 13 and a half AFR. Water temp's not even warm yet, though. You might have a crazy coolant correction map. You might want to start there, see what it does to the whole thing. There we go. 13 to 1, cruising. You know what I'm saying? You can overall change the map by just check your correction on the on the coolant temp sensor for 10 4. All right, should we try six gear? Oh, there it is. Whoa! 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 Put the clutch in. It's in, it's in. What the hell was that? I don't know, some crazy vibration. Blow a tire? Did a wheel break off? Running fine. Front tire, belt, something stupid? Dude, I have no idea. That was violent. I'm stuck in here. Climbing right. out on fire. What do you got for light? Lights are on, right? I don't know, but open my door for me. I saw sparks. What was it? Yeah, let me out. Tighten it. Wheels? Some stupid? Uh, I was cruising. Sixth gear. Made it. Mile maybe. Mile and a half. And all of a sudden, big bang, crazy shutter. Put the clutch right in. Motor's still running fine. Smooth. But some kind of crazy chassis vibration. Something broke loose. Clutch in, it was still doing it? Yeah. I had the clutch in immediately. I was just going to sit here and say, all right, maybe six gear's a problem. But you said the clutch was in. The second it happened, I put the clutch in. No, it was we were rolling like that. We were we were like, you know, coasting with, with the clutch in. With the clutch in, and with that vibration. And it was still doing it. Yeah, it feels like the drive shaft was breaking loose or something crazy. Like you know, I don't know. That was weird. It felt like something broke. Something broke for sure. Well, let's try pushing it and see if it does it. Go ahead. I didn't drive off the road. Here. It's in the rear end. The rear end broke. Yeah. The rear end broke. <laughs> we went, what, two miles and broke the rear end? Two miles, baked barely. Uh, all right, it's the, that's the ramp truck, right? What? That's the ramp truck there, right? All right, yeah. All right, so let's move the van over, drive forward, we'll get the trailer off, put it back on the trailer, and uh, that's the end of our night. Yeah. Good times. You can push it and hear the rear end just clanging. clanging really badly. And I think it just broke something. Either the pinion or the ring gear or something just broke in there. Some let loose. I don't know if there's a spool in there or what's going on, but it is unhappy. So that's the end of our uh, our drive. Watch that. Watch the, <laughs> yeah, whatever. We don't need a script, do we? Just drive old cars. They're going to break. They always do. Here, give me that. Best crew in the business right here. Everybody say hello to Mr. Ryan Crossley. Cheers. Push, okay. Pushing the car, our man in the camera. Our intrepid director, Chris Reed, also pushes cars and holds a camera and directs. Tell him to get the trailer off that thing. I'll get it, don't worry. I'm, I'm over here doing 10 jobs. Look, I'm filming. He's not even pushing. I'm pushing. Well, I was. Now I'm holding the camera. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure the rear end broke. No, how did you get a camera? <laughs> oh, I just took it from, <laughs> how did you get a camera? Oh, I just kind of took it upon right, myself. Bring the van to... up behind us. I don't know what I'm doing with this thing. I'm just pushing a bunch of buttons. All right, go ahead and stop it here. We gotta get the trailer off. Now we got an adventure. It's this time.
All right. Send it. Good? Turn the headlights off. Good test drive. Hell yeah. Test of the rear end. Learned a lot. It we failed. Learned a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Is this a uh, no? Learned a lot this week. Whew. That sucked, dude. I wasn't doing a damn thing. Thank God that wasn't the engine. Oh yeah. She's running like a top. I wonder if we can find a nine inch. Oh yeah. Well, what axles find do you have? 35? 35. 35. Yeah, we'll find one. Make a post now. Yeah, just get us get us a loaded third member with uh, the right flange in the front. We got a 1350 yoke. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's all serious stuff. People have it. You got a new drive shaft made for the new trans, right? Oh yeah, it's all brand new. The drive shaft looked like it was in one piece. All right. All bolted together and no engagement issue. Nah, it had plenty of room for it to plunge. You know, I don't, I don't want to bring you down or whatever, buddy. But, I think but you're a, going to. There's a pretty good chance we're not going to win our class this year. You think? Yeah. Ah. Huh. Well, that changes everything. I know. I'm still making this post asking for a new nine. Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah, you are. Do it. I'll throw that thing in on my back. I can't wait. I like changing center sections. Those are light. They don't weigh nothing. Especially aluminum ones. Yeah. Hopefully somebody's got a nice strange one or something. Speedmaster. Something solid. We have made it to the final hotel of Drag Week. The last Drag Week. Racing day is tomorrow morning. <clears throat> We had to throw the car up on the ramp truck because it broke the rear end after driving it like two miles, which is a bummer because it was running pretty good. Uh, transmission was working well. The only thing we hadn't touched yet is the rear end and it exploded. So I guess we'll mess with that in the morning. I think we have some parts coming and I'm still hell bent on trying to see this car do a wheelie. Well, figure it out. Wow, this is quite a day. I feel like the universe is telling me I don't know what the universe is trying to tell me. Like, normally when you work this hard, success comes after that. That's what all the memes say. That's what all the smart people on Instagram say. But we have busted our asses and we just keep getting kicked in the nuts. Um, blew up the Hemi, fixed the Hemi. Road tripped two miles and then uh, the rear end exploded. But uh, on the bright side, we have parts coming tomorrow. So one way or another, we are going to try to make a pass in this car to finish our hot rod drag week. And uh, at this point, if it just goes down the track without something else breaking, I'll be a happy man. This is day five coming at you from Worldwide Technology Raceway. Everybody here has been on a thrash. Remember, every car that you're gonna see racing today has been on a five-day road trip. They've road tripped four different times, roughly 750 miles. For some of the many more as they go chasing parts and things like that, as they come back here to St. Louis. Last day of drag week. Um, wow, all I can say is wow. <laughs> uh, last night, we decided to pull the car off the ramp truck because we were about 100 miles from the hotel. We ran into the drag week crowd finally and we wanted to roll with those guys. And so we just put the street tune in it and hopped on the highway and two miles later, the rear end blew up. 
And although we haven't ripped it apart yet, we're pretty sure the third member is no good. So uh, we're very fortunate in that we have really, really good relationship with the folks at Quick Performance in Iowa. They built the rear end in the car. That's not their third member. That got changed last week when it was on the dyno. It's a used one. I don't know the history of it, but I think it broke. And so uh, Caleb, who uh, is the son of the owner, let's put it mildly, um, brought us a third member out of another YouTuber's car. They went and pulled it out of that dude's Mustang and brought it here. Uh, go follow Junkyard Digs, because that's pretty sweet. Um, that guy saw my post on the internet that I was looking for a nine inch third member and they ripped the one out of his car and they drove it all the way down here for us. Uh, we're gonna fix it, that's what we do. We're just gonna keep fixing it until things go our way. And uh, even if they don't, it doesn't matter. We're not at home, we're not sitting on the couch, we're making memories. This is fun, no matter how you look at it. This is fun to me because uh, Tony and I don't really get to hang out unless we're going on an adventure. So no matter how this turns out, I'm enjoying it. I'll start draining it. Looks clean. See, I think that's the pinion gone in this thing. Yeah. What do you think? You hear this? Grab, grab this and. Yeah, that noise is right here. No, your drive shaft's broke, dude. What? I told you. Look, I told you it's dry. What do you mean you told? You didn't tell me anything. You you asked me and I looked at it. The bear, the needle bearings are gone. The cup is gone. It's gone. It's a lot easier. So I looked at it, and granted it was in the dark, and I'm like, no, the U-joints are there, everything's fine. I just couldn't grab it. Yeah. We were on the side of the road. It just sounded so hollow, but yeah, so. Well, hell, that's a lot easier. So it looks like the clip must have just go not been in all the way. Really? Came out, and then the, you know, the cup must have just got sent flying. Well, hell, all right. But. I'm just gonna plug this. None of it's right. The other one's wrecked too. What other one's wrecked? Uh, it's fine. We'll just do the one on the yoke. The one on the yoke and the trans looks all right. We'll just need to do. We'll fix it. Let's take the drive shaft out. All right. Okay. My bad. We should look a little. I mean, I look, man. Yeah, I look. Look, it was on the ground. On I the know. Side of the highway. I know. <laughs> And then it was on the ground on the ramp truck. We I was to, I was asleep, dude. We weren't climbing under there to like, there's no way to get under there without taking it off the ramp truck. All right, so why don't we... It passed the side of the highway at visual inspection. It sure did. At least for me. It sure <laughs> did. We had to take the wheels off anyway to put the slicks on. There you go. We'll be on track in no time. All right, we got, we got a little, that little guy's perfect. Yeah, no, that's Go ahead. You on there all the way? Yeah. We didn't make it in the drive last night, David. It's a brand new drive shift. Brand new units. It must have just not been clicked in and been like, so I'm still like, stay. They're so tight in there, man. Is the clip missing all together? Clip, it's gone. Wow. The clip is gone and the bearing cap. You know what I mean? Like whatever the needle carrier is gone. What happened was the front U joint just came apart. Either the clip wasn't in all the way. Uh, it, whatever happened, uh, this bearing cap went flying and just the center nub is in there, which is like a huge, a huge hole. And we must have just heard it banging around, going nuts. Cause it's got a twist and turn and without that, you know, essentially it just came apart. And I assumed, cause when I looked under it on the side of the highway, I saw the drive shaft was together and I saw U joints. Yeah, it didn't and fall even, out. Even when we put it on the ramp truck, I looked under there, I saw the drive shaft was in one piece. And I'm like, okay, it's the rear end. And uh, so we scrambled to get a new center section, but luckily Caleb who brought the center section also brought a U joint and some other things. So we're yeah. good. We're in business either way. Misdiagnosed it, but we're still okay. Yeah, it was related. Ooh. Yeah. Related parts. We're just taking the break-in oil out of it. Yeah, we just wanted to change the oil in the rear. Yeah. 
it's so crazy because when you were rolling it around, I'm in here listening, going, I'm hearing it right here. Yeah. It's, well, it's all connected. It's transferring all the way through the It's all connected, yeah. Well, I was sitting here rolling it with my hand, and I still was like, huh. And then I look, and I could see the dry, the, the tip of the dry chair going like, meh. Make sure they're good. All right. All right. All right, not a drop. But Tony just crawled under there to pull the drive shaft out and realized the U-joint cap fell out of this side and clip's gone, the whole thing's gone. So we might get lucky. We're still gonna pull the fill plug and look through there and just inspect the pinion as best we can to make sure there's nothing wrong there. But I, we might just we'll need a U-joint. Yeah, I'm gonna spin it we'll over give her and a check for chip teeth. Yeah, we'll give her a wiggle. Which is great because Caleb drove down here with a third member that we may or may not need, but he also drove down here with a U-joint, which we definitely need, so. Yeah, way to bring everything. Thank you. Hell yeah. Thank you. Keep you guys covered. It's not your first rodeo, I bet. Uh, yeah, they brought everything we need. New strap bolts, gaskets. I'm just gonna even start the one through the spares housing. of everything. Yeah. Just everything, spares. Spare pistons and rings already gapped, already. He brought, he had one spare piston, and I, when, we, when we loaded it in the trailer, I was like, dude, why are we taking a piston? I was like, if we got to look at this piston this week, I'm out. He and said then, that I'm out. I was like, I'm out. Next thing you know, he's file fitting rings. <laughs> Two days later, I'm like, hey, buddy, look, this is, he's thank file God fitting we rings. have this We're thing. putting in that one piston. <laughs> It strangely goes in like crazy easy. See this? I wonder if the ears are too wide for it. This is not, I can see around it. It's not the right, something's wrong. Like it walloped out? Like, yeah, all right, hit it. Okay. All right, all right, all right, it's out. Yeah, that's hammered. Well, we'll have to darn it. We'll just file that down. I don't think I have a file. Let's make a friend. You guys got any files? <coughs> U-joint, yeah. You, one of the caps just pieced out on the highway. And then the, the you know, the, the, what's left on the inside was banging around on the, on the yoke. All right, no problem. That's all right. Oh, thank you. Perfect. That might work. Yeah, here's why this event rules, right? Everyone's here racing, everyone's competing. If you win, there's no money involved, which means everyone here will help everyone else. Even if you're in the same class trying to beat somebody, you break something, you need a tool, you could pretty much just walk around here and someone's gonna have it and they're gonna loan it to you. This is not the right file, but we might make it the right file if I can't find the right file. So when this thing, when the cap, the bearing cap came out of this one, inside of it is the, is the center cross, um, and it has a much smaller diameter post on it, and that was just banging around, and it actually started to, we were moving the car with it. I did drive the car off the highway with it, so it wound up banging around in here pretty good and leaving some marks, so I have to take a little bit of material back off it. So on day one, I borrowed a fusible link from a guy with a late model Mustang. I just borrowed a cordless die grinder from a guy with a 55 Chevy. Here? Yeah, on the right side. I love this place. It does, and I have a trailer full of stuff. We can't fit any more stuff, and I always feel like I'm overpacking, but invariably, we use all of it and then borrow stuff from the stuff that, you know, we can't think of or like forget to bring or whatever. So I love this place. I love these people. Yeah. All right. Let me get that. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get that paper towel out of there. That's my guide. That's your guide? Yeah. I'm like, if that's stuck on it, then let's go on it a little crooked. There we go. Well, you should have to knock it in. There you go. Give a couple taps. Yeah, I ground it down. I ground down the bore. Try to get it flat. We're going to try to knock it in. This hammer. Right. Let this go up and down. Just let it rotate. There you go. Use the other side of the socket. There you go. You can Aim on this side just to get it started. It's a little crooked. There you go. All I've ever used is a socket. It's pretty to damn do close this. to what I'd use at home. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if there's a proper way to do this because I'm not. I'm not yeah. professionally trained in cars at all. This is the only thing I've ever used was a socket. So I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just saying that's what we're doing. All right, give it a little, a little knock. Yeah. 
There she goes. You got those clips? Uh, which one do you want? Right. Oh, you want purple? What's your favorite color? Are they all the same or what? I mean, gold, same material. Gold's kind of nice. Purple's that. What fell out? That's the one I gold don't want. Gold fell out, I think. Yeah, I don't want that. Whatever. Are fell they all out. the same? Spring steel or what? Yeah, know. you don't know. I don't know either, man. I'm just asking. Look, I'm if gold out. fell out, I wouldn't put it in. Let's do the other one. Yeah, let's do the steppest thing you got. I mean, I'm sure that's irrational, but uh, I'm with it. They're probably all. I like We're, blue. I like yeah, blue I'm mad at gold right now. Just in case. All right. I bet that's what it was. It just, was, it just wasn't all. The, it wasn't all the way seated. But even if it's not, it, it, you, know, you gotta knock them out usually. Yeah. All right. Clip me. Another, another Barney clip, and we're good. There we go. All right. Hell yeah. Expert, well, let's clean it up. Yeah, you're way more than we are. You are an expert. Yeah, claim it. That shirt makes you an expert. Claim it. We don't build drive shafts. Ah, it's a I'm a peripheral accessory here. A couple of neck on it, pretty right. good. Brown wheels, brown wheels, and screwed, dude. <laughs> So, these are badass. So, I feel a lot safer with that setup than right on. what you had. I noticed it looked like the car turned a little bit left on you when you left the other day. Yeah, it did. Could have been the wheel, could have been the tire. I wonder. It, it definitely spun. But, oh, uh, oh, yeah, it did. Yeah, which was a surprise because, <laughs> I mean, Grant, I don't know what RPM I left at, but yeah. I was like, huh, oh, it's spun. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Dude, this it is. It could have been a little bit of. Uh, if the driver's side was moving in the tire, mm -hmm. the other one didn't have a chance yeah, so, yeah at least this way it's safe and secure i'll run them um same lug nuts that i got i think these will work yeah you have a shank style yeah so yeah that should work and it's dual drilled so oh, no matter the bolt pattern right on dude right. thanks Jason. good luck yeah. appreciate it yeah uh we've now come full circle we started the week off with our first problem our only problem was that our wheels front and back we couldn't get them to balance and i don't even know why but i know that we took the tires tried them on other wheels and they would balance um long story short mike cotton went home he had my old wheels off last to me under his lowered van his ford econoline van the van is so low to the ground that he couldn't just take the wheels off he had to cut sheet metal out of the floor to get the wheels out from the inside of the van brought them here we put my new drag tires on those wheels that's what i made a pass with on day one but i have to give them back to him so jason from mickey thompson's loaning me his wheels so that we can go out and make a pass with wheels that don't shake the hell out of the car when i go so we're using all the parts from all the people this week the cool thing about being here is is you're surrounded by experts like jason from mickey thompson watched the car whole shot saw it spun and went left and um you know gave me some tips the one of the big reasons we're changing right is my wheels do not have screws in them we run such low air pressure in the tires that a slick tire a bias ply tire tends to suck in at high wheel speed and grow and it will be loose on the wheel and the possibility of the bead coming off the tire is pretty high in that scenario like my wheels really should have screws in them and they don't so jason's like just be safe take my wheels run with these get you through the weekend you'll be good so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna put his wheels which do balance and are round and everything's good about them and they have screws and so you joints in tires on put it in race mode and hopefully we get to make a pass here today good so right now what we're doing is uh we're using snapchat and caleb's phone to look inside of the diff as he rotates it because you can get a pretty good view of the ring and pinion gears to see if there are any chips. So essentially we're checking right here and on that outside looking for chips. Spin it over, everything looks pretty good. We didn't see any chunks of anything when we, the oil, when we drained out the oil. It's a little loose, but for what our options are, I'd say we're probably good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, you're, let's put this in, huh? <laughs> Okay. It just barely slides in. Like really barely. Yeah, I got it to go, but it's you know how it goes. If this thing would droop, you know, we put it under the axle, but if we have to, we can droop it. How do you get it to I just wiggled it in. Like, you know, you put it in. Yeah. Here, like <laughs> 
thing like this. Alright. Kind of get it under it and then oh, hold on, don't do that. Never have one you one you join. Yeah. Can't spin it then? Yeah, spin it in or something. I don't know, it worked. Might have a little more wiggle with the broken new joint though. Yeah. How hard is it to get droop on the car? We just gotta jack it up. It's just sitting on the axle, that's our problem. Yeah. We just put, you know, it's a full strength car. We jack it up in, in a minute. Wanna try it? Yeah. So the rear end looks good, certainly good enough for a couple of runs. Um, the, the, the setup is a little loose on it, but that's not the end of the world. Just that, that's the interface between the pinion gear and the ring gear. You hear that? We're gonna run it for today, but at some point, we're probably swapping that fresh one. This might take a minute. I'll use my right hand at some point. <laughs> All right, so we left uh, the Gremlin with Kenny. We had it brought over to his shop to do a couple things on it, set the timing, dial in that throttle language, and he did wind up putting uh, a, a fresh oil pickup in that pan because it was just not. We had we banged it up so much. We wanted it to be right. He did that, and now. It should be 100% for David, so I don't have to feel bad about it. And we're just pulling off the street exhaust. Gonna put the bullhorns back on it. Get all everything we can get in there, I'm putting in there. It does burn quite, I mean, it's running so fat down low that it's burning more than I, you'd think it would. There you go. Now it's full. Full, full, full. A little over full, but we'll take it. Yep. Where you been? I got our uh, exhibition stickers. Hell yeah. We pull our class stickers off, put these on, and we can go in the all-run session. We don't have to wait for everybody to finish. Great. And they'll just slot us in whenever they feel like. All right. Know, we're uh, not inter interfering. Drive shaft is in. Nice. I'm changing the fuel over. This thing is full to the brim. I wanted to leak out the top. Oh, it did. <laughs> it did, buddy. I overfilled it until it poured out. But it did have way less in there. I put five gallons in yesterday, and it still took like two and a half. Yeah, remember and I said it's running a, so fat. Whatever I put it is. a five in, and then whatever was left in the other five, and we still managed to use it. I think this tune might be as fat as the thing says. It says right in the name of the tune, yeah. fat. Yeah, it's and fat. I'm like, oh, okay, it's fat, boy. That is cool. Cotton. Can I trade you for some hats? No, you don't have to give me nothing. Man. I'd like to. I'd like to. This is, inc oh, this is incredible. This is incredible. I just put on yesterday. I'll be careful with because it because I didn't have the match at Crater's on it. And I realized it right. Dude, that is my hundreds of models. I did have the correct wheels. That is incredible. It's very delicate. All right, I'm gonna set it down. So I'm I've already started building another one. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna put this in my truck. I'm gonna grab you some hats. Don't leave, okay? Don't leave. Hold on. Wow. And this is my daughter's build book for her car. Keeping all of our paperwork. Okay. That one guy. Dude. I saw the best trailer design. That's okay. good. Yeah. Look what I just saw. Side opens up. All the tools are. That is the next level. Dude. Look at this. So this is Dennis Taylor's trailer. I just borrowed two tools from him. And when I walked by, I noticed his trailer design and I went, that's a man whose car was way ready and he had nothing to do. And he was like, you know what? Let me build the greatest drag week trailer ever. Because every tool is not in a toolbox, it's a wall. You open up the side like ours and it's just a wall of tools. It's incredible. So the smaller pulley is gonna spin faster, make more boost to a certain point. Eventually you're gonna lose thermal efficiency. On the old roots blower, it's gonna not make any more power. Um, so we are gonna dial it from a 59 to a 48 tooth. So you can see significantly more party in this one. All right, we're almost ready here. We got a new pulley on. We're about to put the race tune in. Uh, I've gotten rid of Tony. He doesn't work hard enough. So I picked up a new call pilot here on the last day of drag week. Maybe Tony will learn his lesson and I'll invite him back later. But today he's out. What's your name? Chase. Chase, welcome to the team. Thanks. He's stronger too. He can leave two transmissions, not just one. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, Chase, is we're gonna put a new tune in here. All right, so this is how it works. That's ignition on. This is the start button. You always wanna make sure it's out of gear. Here we go.
Uh, there's our engine RPM. That's what I look at when I'm racing down the track. When I see 7,000, I shift the next gear. Can we rev it up a little bit? What do you think? Sure. All right. I gotta reset the TPS, it isn't working. The first few degrees of pedal movement, it's not doing anything, so. Yeah, we have it in a different spot now. So. Smell a little bit of coolant. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell the computer that I wanna do wide open throttle on the pedal so that it sees what that looks like. So I'm gonna click start, and I'm gonna slowly go to the floor once and then I'm going to release it and then I'm going to do it again once and I'm going to release it and now if you look here this is throttle position so watch when I move my foot down here oh yeah it goes up yeah so now it knows I'm at a hundred percent and now it knows that's what idle is so now it'll drive better so I'm going to turn the thing off and I'm going to turn it back on and it should run a little better now Gear oil in it yet? Don't do that. Got a that sounds really good. Dude, I think we're, sounds really good. I think we're back. Hey, we're back. She good. Starts right up. Sounds awesome. Looks really good. We're gonna run it through the gears with the rear end up in the air. Make sure the drive shaft spins happily, and and then get ready to race. That is still loot. What in the hell? Uh, it won't tighten up. Put them through there again? They bought them out. It doesn't look like they're too long. That's what I asked before. The shank's too long? It doesn't look like it, but they don't... You try it. They wouldn't tighten up. Like, this thing stopped turning, but the wheel was still loose on there. Well, this, we had them on with this set up. No, we never, these showed up today. We never run these. What? These showed up today. These wheels? Yeah. What did we run before? My old ones. Without screws. Where are your old ones now? That's they're here. We can use them. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to mess around with this. Hey, let's put the canopy up. It's raining. All right. Uh, so our, our new loaner wheels wouldn't fit the car. Um, so we're going back to my original ones that Cotton ripped off the van that he has. Um, and now it's raining. So <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to keep acting as if we're going to get to make a run. So I'm going to put the wheels on it. We're going to keep the car as dry as we can. Because when it rains, there's not a lot of weather stripping in this car. So if water ends up in it and we do get to make a pass, there's a good chance whatever water's in it will come out of it during the pass, and that's no good. You don't want that to happen. What's nice about that bleed is it doesn't change the TPS. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. Oh, I might just, I might this just... wheel's got quite a whoop in it. Oh, I know, dude. It's not ideal. Nah. It's all right. So do all the other eight we have, though, too. I know. <laughs> Oh, I just sit here and nap now. Car's ready. Nature's not ready, though. It's still raining. And uh, the rub here is that we're out of competition, so we are not a priority, and that's the way it should be. There's a whole lot of people here who haven't even made a pass yet, and to finish Drag Week, they need to drive down that drag strip and then turn in their last time slip. To win Drag Week, they need to have the lowest average in their class. So there's guys that... If they don't get it done on the first pass, they're gonna to wanna to go two, three, four times, whatever it takes, right? Meanwhile, I'm gonna hang out off to the side here and go fit me in when you have time. None of that matters though, if it's raining all day, because at some point they'll, they'll cut this thing off and have the awards ceremony. So there is that.
you know, this isn't a lose the shot moment. This is a, how much more fun can we have? Give me one pass down the drag strip. I will be a happy man. We've got a big shell coming. It's not here yet. We've got about maybe 45 minutes to an hour before we, before we have that. So you are officially calling the event. The event is called. Straight crushing defeat, top to bottom. Last time we did this, win, win, win this time. Lose, lose, lose. What a kick. What a kick in the pants, son. Ugh. Man, I just wanted to see one run. Dude, if it weren't for bad luck, I, I'm dumbfounded. I'm, I'm not speechless. You wouldn't but have I'm, any luck at all. I'm literally just over here like, we worked really hard. The car is ready to go down a drag strip yeah. and it won't stop raining. Yeah, we didn't, not only did we not finish drag week, we barely started drag week. We didn't make it out of the parking we lot. We didn't make it out of the parking lot, dude. I've oh. never made it out of this parking lot at this drag strip. Complete and utter failure, top to bottom. And I really hope that when we got back here, it would be like, all right, let's go run an eight, let's high five, let's have some beers. It'll yeah. be, it'll make it all worth it. I was like, well, we can just hit the last three tracks. Then the next day I'm like, the last two tracks. And then like a little bit of driving. Then we're like, okay, forget the driving. If we can just get to the every, we brought our goals down. 40 times and still missed the last one of just pick the wheels up and run an eight. Yeah, yeah. The, the only thing I have anymore now is that lately my kids have just been like, Dad, will you fix it so you can take us to school in it? Yeah. And on, so on the bright side, it's together. It's fixed. It runs. I can take the kids to school. I love you guys. I will do that. Yeah, maybe bring a backup vehicle, though. Just saying. And chase car? Chase car. Bring a chase support vehicle. It's for not them. legal at How far do they live from school? The farther than we went on this whole trip, That's dude. I'll tell you right. what. Okay, I yeah, be, be careful. Honest. Be careful out there. Uh, but I still enjoyed it. Like, I'll, I'll still, I'll say this every time. We could have been at home on the couch doing nothing. And I met so many rad people this yeah. week. I made so many new friends. I. Didn't know if I was gonna go, go to the PRI show in Indy this December. Now I want to because I met new people, yeah. you know, like Jake and his buddies that stayed up all night to help us rebuild that Hemi. It turns know? out that the tracks we raced at were really the friends we made along the way. Oh, that's deep. Or something. Did, did you see I'm that? You know, it was fun. I regret nothing. This was awesome. Did you see that? It was so dumb and awesome and ah, full it, of failure. It was great, you know, and, and now I want to do is sleep and drink. I know. Yeah. Let's go drink first. All right. All right. Go over a little bit. Keep going. And stop. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so recap, Drag Week got rained out yesterday. Obviously it was disappointing after all the work we put into getting the car back together. We really wanted to make a pass and just see, you know, what's this thing like now? Um, but we got rained out. Everybody did. It's a bummer, but it is what it is. So I woke up this morning, started driving home to Georgia from Illinois, and I thought maybe there's a drag strip that's open and uh, talked to the folks at Brainerd Motorsports Park in uh, Ringgold, Georgia, and uh, they have something going on tonight. Uh, however, it's eighth mile, which not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just we kind of had a goal of trying to make an eight second pass with this car in the quarter mile. 
So then I talked to my homies at Holly, which is located in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and um, they found out that there's something going on at Beach Bend Raceway, which is a really special track for me because that's the first place this car ever ran a 10 second pass. Um, so uh, we're headed that way and I called Pete Harrell and I just let him know, I'm like, hey, you know, the car's back together, we rebuilt your motor, sorry about that, and um, we're gonna go make a hit. And he said, all right, that's cool, and I'll call you later. Well, he called me back, and he said, I'm looking at all your dyno data from when we dynoed this thing, and something I didn't notice was that at the end of every dyno pull, when you lifted, you were out of fuel pressure, and the injector duty cycle was nearly doubling. He said, and I normally would catch that, and I just didn't. He said, so you might have a fuel pump problem. He says, I know, you know, you." You don't think you had enough fuel in the tank, but you also might have something going on with your fuel pump. And I said, oh, well, I probably shouldn't go make a hit with this car then if there's something going on with the fuel pump. And it's a, it's a Holly EFI pump, um, and I'll show it to you here in a second. It drops into the top of the fuel cell and it has twin 450 fuel pumps in it. And it's sat here with no fuel in the tank for two years. Did that do anything? I don't know. Um, so I called my buddies back at Holly, and I'm like, here's what's going on. We might have something going on with the fuel pump. I know it's Saturday, but can we somehow sneak in the warehouse and sell me a pump? And um, when we started talking through what was going on, they're now running the math to find out, do I even have enough fuel pump in this thing? Because maybe I don't. You know, When you have E85 or any alcohol-based fuel, you need to flow more fuel than you would on just regular old gasoline. Um, this pump has been in there since we ran this engine on rate, leaded race fuel. Um, we switched it to E85 and on the website, the numbers look like it should be right. But in the real world, I might be out of fuel pump. Um, and this is, I think them calling me back to find out. Yo, we're like three hours away from Bowling Green. Um, and uh, I just talked to Robin. He's concerned and is doing some math to see whether I even have enough fuel pump in this thing. Um, and and so that was that was new to me. I was like, oh wait, hold on. I didn't even think about that. That maybe we don't have enough fuel pump in it. Um, and so that's kind of where I'm at. I'm gonna keep heading that way in case you know you guys have some miracle, you know, where we could get a fuel pump today because I'd like to run the car, but I totally understand if that can't happen. Uh, oh man, I hate to do that too. Um, I, I appreciate it, but I hate to cut your trip short. Um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Robin as soon as he calls me back and then I'll hit you back. Thanks, brother. Later. Wow, that's really cool. So that's my buddy Jeff who works at Holly. Apparently he's at the gun range, you know, enjoying his Saturday. <laughs> but uh, he's willing to go back to work and get us a fuel pump. We just had to figure out what fuel pump we need. Um, so I'm waiting for my other friend Robin who works at Holly to do math that's way over my head uh, to find out is this the right one and we just need to replace it or do we need a bigger fuel pump? Um, either way, I think we're just gonna detour and keep going towards Bowling Green, Kentucky, which is where Holly and Beach Bend Raceway are at rather than going straight home. And um, yeah, I don't know, I'll call my wife later and give her the news and maybe some flowers. There's not enough shoes. She could not buy enough shoes to like balance out what I've done here today <laughs> or yesterday or last week or yeah. yeah. She can do whatever she wants as far as I'm concerned. As long as I get to keep playing with cars. We have two fuel cells, one with a street pump that's just got one pump, and then the race cell, which has the two 450s in it, but they're just on when we go to the track. However, I can wire this and, and stage it. That's not the end of the world. It's okay. No. It, yeah. It's just, it, it's just the pumps are going to flow too much. What's going to happen is if you turn both pumps on and set the pressure with it idling and set it to 60, right. when you go wide open, it's going to drop to 40. So... You know, we need to set it, it to 60. Off, that's all. So we need to set it to 60 with one pump on. That way, when both pumps are on, we have way more than we need. That would probably that be what that's what I do. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Um, what part number would you guys recommend then for this? It's I got, uh, I got your computer. 
I'm looking on my phone. Is it? Is it? A, is it? Is it, it, is it is it a, Flange. Yeah, 12 volt it's, flange. It's, it's a 12 volt flange? Yep. Yes. Let me see if I can find something here. It's a dash 10 feed dash 8 return. Yeah. And, and Doug, Doug is not available today, so that, that we, we tried. But oh, I totally understand. It's, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, where is it? Just for my phone. It looks like so it's twelve volt. Yep. Yes. It looks like it's part number twelve dash one four nine. Okay, got it. All right, I'm gonna text them, and if they make it happen, awesome. If they don't, I just appreciate all the help on the phone and the info. You guys, as always, are amazing. Well, we tried real hard, Mike, and we got a good good base group of passionate people that will step up even when they're you know screwed up family deals and but we know how it is we've been there done that so we do know how it is all right i appreciate you more than you know thank you i'm gonna i'm gonna hit up jeff and see if we can get one and if not we'll get it later all right let us know how it goes good luck i definitely will thanks doug thanks robin okay no okay yeah. thanks doug. well there you go not enough fuel pump. We're making more power than I guess we ever have, and the fuel flow is way more than this pump is capable of doing. So probably a combination of problems at the beginning of Drag Week. You know, even though I filled this thing up, I, I mean, I was dumbfounded. When it came back and Tony put the stick in it and was like, there's almost nothing here, I was like, how did we use five gallons? We're making a lot more horsepower now, I guess. So. Uh, not only do we need to keep it topped off, but we need a different fuel pump now. So let me call my other buddy at Holly and see, can he get us one? If he can, we're going track testing. If he can't, well, we'll do it later. I'll go home and hang out with my wife and kids. <music>
Okay, now let's change the fuel pump. Yeah, so here's here's what's going on here. Uh, we're gonna take out a Holly 12-147 drop-in fuel cell module, and we're going to replace it with a Holly 12-149. The difference here is these are regular brushed fuel pumps that you just wire up to a relay. It's pretty pretty simple to install. The ones we're replacing them with are what's called a brushless fuel pump. Each pump, and there's two of them in here, will need a controller to actually make it run. So we're complicating things a little bit in that right now I just have four wires coming in here. Now I'm gonna have two controllers that I need to quickly duct tape into the car and then wire in here because this fuel pump, we're pretty sure, doesn't have enough flow for this engine at wide open throttle. We're gonna have nearly twice the flow, but in order to take advantage of that, we have to install two fuel pump controllers. And uh, I don't know what time it is, it's probably 3.30 right now. This event ends at six o'clock and allegedly they're gonna let me run if they can fit me in. And that's all the motivation I need to stop on my way home and rewire and replumb the back end of my car for more horsepower. And sadly, Tony, had to get on a plane and go home because I've already eaten up six days of his life and he's got his own YouTube channel to take care of, which is called Stay Tuned, plus, you know, family life and all that, you know. We had a hell of a working vacation and now he had to leave. I'm on my way home and I'm just kind of delaying my arrival just a little bit because I'd really like to experience this car with its new motor. This was a great fuel pump until we turned the boost up. So this has dual 450s on it. This has two brushless pumps. These put out twice as many of these, but also needs two controllers to make them work. So we gotta wire all that up right now. Right now I'm measuring the depth of the pickups for the fuel pumps because it's a very short fuel cell. These are adjustable up and down on these rods. And you have to get this where these are almost touching the bottom of the fuel cell. You don't want them too far up. Otherwise then when you're low on fuel and it sloshes around, it may not touch these socks. Um, so we've got a depth of nine and a quarter to the rod and about nine and a quarter to the bottom of the sock. Now I'm gonna go check the fuel cell and see what that is. Eight and seven eighths. So we gotta shorten these and adjust them a little bit. So we gotta do two things. Not only do we have to slide the pumps up so the socks don't sit on the floor, we've gotta break the end of this rod off because this pump can be used in a really deep fuel cell, which is why the rod goes all the way down, or a really shallow one. Ours is so shallow that the rod's gonna hit the floor before this seals to the top. So we have to break this off. Normally you'd stick this in a vise. I don't have a vise, so I'm probably just gonna use a couple pair of pliers and uh, bust this off. That's why it's already kind of grooved here, so it's a little easier to bust off. Okay, so now, this is really as short as you want to make this because the hose has a pretty good bend in it there that I'm not stoked about, but beggars can't be choosers. And I'm not confident in shorting the hose right now and having it go back together. There we go. So now we have an eighth of an inch between the bottom of the sock and the tank. I'm cool with that. Uh, I don't know the name of it, but right now there's a really big motorcycle show and drag race happening. 
and um, they've got top fuel Harleys going, which are incredible to watch. Those guys are nuts, and uh, I don't know what else is happening here, but it looks like a good party. Essentially, what you're looking at is a fuel cell, and normally it would have a cap that you pop off to put the gas in. This fuel pump replaces the cap, and it has two fuel pumps built into it, a pickup, it has a return line, it has a filler, the whole deal. These are the power wires for each fuel pump. There's two of them. So here's a controller right here. And here's a controller right here. And then each one has a wiring harness with four wires. What you're looking at is power, ground. The yellow wire controls the speed of the pump. You can run it at half speed or 100% speed. The yellow wire, if you give it a ground, the pump will run at half speed. If you take the ground away, it will run at full speed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have one pump on running at half speed. We're gonna have another pump completely off. When it's just idling around, it doesn't need both pumps running. As soon as this thing sees more than 20% throttle position on the EFI system, both pumps will be full speed. The one that's running half speed will go full speed. The one that was off will automatically turn on and go full speed. And that's all done using the Holly Dominator EFI ECU and just a couple of relays that are already in there. The wires are already sitting here. Like this won't be that bad. When I get home, I'll rewire this and clean it all up. This is gonna be pretty temporary, but that's because I don't have a lot of time, nor do I have materials to mount these. Top fuel motorbike. That was a top fuel Harley Davidson. Wow. That sounded awesome. Can you imagine being on a two wheeled motorcycle, like with a nitro powered engine, just, you know, between your legs? Like, those guys wear Kevlar, like a shield on their chest, and when they lay down, because if the motor blows up, you don't want the shrapnel going through you, you know, like that. Those are real crazy people. I like them. I am connecting the wiring from the ECU to the fuel pump controller. And um, I've got extensive notes of how I wired the car years ago. And they're telling me which pins in the ECU I wired all these relays to. And so I'm gonna use the ECU when I fire the car up to turn on the first fuel pump and then when this thing sees more than a quarter throttle, it'll turn on the second fuel pump. So rather than having them running all the time, which just is a waste, we're gonna turn them on in stages. Okay, oh, turn the ignition on, Chris. There we go, all right, it works. Now let me nail it off. I'm gonna go back there and put the meter on it and make sure the wire has power. All right, let off, perfect. All right, you can turn it off. I just told the Holly Dominator ECU that when you turn the ignition on, go ahead and turn on fuel pump number one to run the motor. And when the throttle goes above 25%, turn on fuel pump number two. So now we have all the fuel. I'm gonna leave all these wires long because when I get home, I'll clean it all up. I'll permanently mount these things. But in the meantime, we can test it all out using some zip ties, some duct tape, or maybe a ratchet strap or two. You know, whatever it takes. It looks full, but I'm not making that a mistake again, so I'm just gonna put a little more in there. And it's over full now. Whoops. I just talked to Brock Porter, who runs this place, and he told me, drive right through the circle track, stop under the bridge, and he'll find a class to fit us into. <laughs> All right, man, cool. This is, this is actually gonna happen. I can't wait to run the car and then tell Tony and everyone else that helped find parts or wrench on it or whatever, that we're, we're gonna make this happen, you know? Better for worse, I'm gonna get to find a leg one out in this thing after two years. Well, tires are checked, fuel level is checked. Second fuel pump is wired, it's functioning. Now we're gonna check the fuel pressure. If it's at 60 at idle, we're good, we can go racing. Fuel pressure. All right, let's 
fire it up again. Yeah, that's gotta turn it down a little bit. It had 28, now we're at 63. We need 60. Okay, I'll check it once more. I think it's good. Let's go try it. <laughs> it's always something. Um you recall earlier in the week when we were at drag week, we had a stuck throttle. Well, we just figured out what that was. It was under the dash after all this. Um, when you had the clutch all the way in, the throttle linkage was rubbing the clutch linkage. And uh, so we bent it, solved that problem, and then somehow doing that closed the butterflies at idle. So the engine had no air and didn't want to fire. So I just opened the butterflies back up. She sounds great. And now, finally, we are ready to go. Harley's going down. That's cool. We're almost under the bridge here at Beach Bend, which is just awesome. This place is historic. And I just watched two top few Harleys just motor down the track in front of me. That is so cool. This car works. I don't know what it ran, and I short shifted it. My granny shifted second, but man, it works. Hey, darling. Uh, how do we do? Hey, my car's got a motorcycle. Uh -huh. 
120 <laughs> 129.60 foot is, which is really good for this car. But it only went 603 to the eight, and it went 934 to 150. That's a good start. It's a very good start. Wow, it fell way faster. Okay, I short shifted first and second. Third, I didn't. Fourth, I didn't. First couple, I did. To begin other than to say it's over <laughs> like we have killed ourselves this week for that moment right there a wheelie and uh, i don't know how big it was i just know i felt the front wheels leave the ground so i short shifted first everything was happening so quickly and it's been so long since i drove the car i short shifted second i ran out third and then i ran out fourth and it felt amazing i don't think the car laid over which is good because the new tune has safeties built into it where if we lost fuel pressure, it would have pulled a bunch of timing and laid over. And yeah, it only went 930 at 150, but baby steps, we're back. It did a 129.60 foot, I think, on the back tires. So I'm overjoyed that this thing is together again. Uh, I got to thank everybody. And I'll try to list people and I know I'm going to blow it because it was such a hellacious week. I made so many new friends. I'm not going to remember everybody, but, but Kenny and Gage who helped Sean Fink, Tyler Fink, myself, Tony Angelo, try to pull Freiberger's motor out of his car, make it, my, make it work in my car, and then put it back in his car. You guys are awesome. Uh, Jake Sanders at Snake Enterprises, Kevin Studicker from Total Seal, Brian Moreland from CP Carrillo, all those people that helped overnight parts and help us get the Hemi back together when we thought there was no chance that it ever run this week. You guys killed it. Um, and then there were just a lot of people around that saw us struggling and just pitched in to help, you know? Um, Mike Cotton cut the floor out of his van to get my wheels out of it so he could bring them back to the track so we could race. <laughs> like, you know, David Newburn probably hasn't slept in a month between shooting Faster with Finnegan, Finnegan's Garage, and working on this thing, you know? That dude earns a vacation in my book. But uh, the car's not done. There's a lot of room for improvement and we'll do it as soon as we have like time to actually sit at a track for a full day and just whittle away at the things that need improving. Uh, in the meantime, I'm taking my kids to school and my wife on a date in this car right here. See you next time.